What's up guys, today I wanted to go over fine tuning a new family of models, that being the Llama models, which come in 7 billion, 13 billion, 33 billion, and 65 billion. What makes these models so exciting is their shockingly good performance for how small they are. Looking at the metrics for zero shot performance, we can see here GPT-3, which is 175 billion, and then we see the 7 billion Llama model and the 13 billion Llama model. You can go ahead and pause and look at the metrics closer if you like, but the 7 billion parameter llama model beats GPT-3 2 out of the 7 metrics, and the 13 billion parameter model beats GPT-3 5 out of the 7 shared metrics. The main reason for this increased performance from reading the paper seems to be just the increased number of tokens it was trained on, with the two smaller models being trained on 1 trillion tokens, and the two bigger models being trained on 1.4 trillion tokens. This is compared to GPT-3, which is trained on only 300 billion tokens. So due to the two smaller models being on par with GPT-3, that means that we can run these models on our own consumer-grade hardware. And after watching this video, you'll be able to fine-tune them to further increase the performance of these models on your data set. To fine-tune the Llama models, we are going to use the repo that I maintain. The link, of course, is in the description. The process that I use to fine-tune relies on Docker and NVIDIA Docker. If you are not familiar with how those work, I recommend you watch the video that appears up in the corner now before coming back to this one. The process of fine-tuning Llama models is largely the same as fine-tuning models such as GBTJ, but at this point in time, there are a few key differences. Those key differences are reflected in the two new files, that is the Dockerfile Llama and the Build Image Llama. Taking a look at the Dockerfile Llama, we see that the only key difference here is that we are installing a fork of Transformers library. This fork is currently going under a pull request, and at some point in the future, the Dockerfile Llama will be removed once this pull request is merged into the main branch of the Transformers library. Uh, the link to this PR will be in the description below, and you can check it out for yourself, but we are going to be building the Transformers library from this commit right here, the llama push of uh, the PR. Now that I've gone over the main differences for the llama models, let's go ahead and walk through it where I will build the image and then use the image and then run it so you can see it working. So here I am with the terminal SSH into my GPU server, which runs Ubuntu 2004. This server has two 3090s, which you can see by running NVIDIA SMI. And we can see the 23090s. They are actually running the Llama model right now. But now that you know what kind of server I'm on, let's go ahead and get started. And to do that, we'll go ahead and need to clone the repo. So to do that, we'll go ahead and copy the HTTPS link from the code dropdown. And now to clone the repo, of course, we go git clone and then paste in the link we have here. Uh, you would hit enter, of course, to clone it, but I have already cloned it, so I will not be doing that. After we clone it, we need to go ahead and enter the folder. So to do that, we'll do cd fine tune and hit enter. So now we're inside of the folder and we can see the contents of the folder by doing ls and we see the files that we have here. And like I said already earlier, we need to then build the image. And to do that, we want to make sure that we do run the build image llama.sh. In the future, it'll probably just be one script, but for now, we need to do the llama one. So build image llama. And mine finished right away because I've already built it, but yours will take a few minutes before it's ready to go. So now that the image is built, we can go ahead and run the image. And to do this, we go ahead and do period, slash, and then run image. And now we are inside of a folder called workspace, and we are mounting the files that were in that directory. So ls, we see the same files. And while we see the same files, the nice thing about Docker is that everything's set up and ready to go. So in order to fine tune, we need a data set. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using the quotes data set that I made in a previous video that goes over how to make your own data set for GBTJ. But with slight modification, it can work for other models such as OPT and even Llama. So I need to go ahead and copy it into the fine tuning repo. So let's go ahead and get that data set. 
We'll go to the quotes data set, and then let's see what's in there. And then we have the llama, and here we have the train and validation data set. So I've already done this, so I'm not gonna hit enter, but what we'll do is, if you wanna follow along, copy, star, and then dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, fine tuning repo. Again, I'm not gonna hit enter, but you would. So now that we have Docker running and have the data set in the right location, let's go ahead and get to the folder where we'll run the program that ultimately starts the fine tuning. To do that, let's do cd dot 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 and then fine tuning repo. And this is the folder that we will run the program that will ultimately fine tune the model. So now that we're in the actual fine tuning folder, Let's go ahead and look at the example run.txt file. And to do that, we'll go ahead and cat that out. And here is an example of a run, not for llama, but just in general. So let's go ahead and copy this and change it for our needs. In this case, instead of GBTJ, we want to fine tune llama. So let's go ahead and paste it. So there are a lot of flags here, and I'm not gonna go over each one. I'll just go over the ones that we are changing. Uh, please read the README for more information on all the flags. So let's go first to the block size. The block size is like the context window. Uh, by decreasing this, you'll use less memory, but if your data set sequences are long, you want to keep it at least as long as your longest sequence. For the quotes data set, I'm pretty sure the longest sequence is like 176 tokens. So let's go ahead and lower it to that. This will allow a bigger batch size as well so due to the less memory. Uh, we want to get rid of the tokenizer name because we're not using the GBT2 tokenizer. Um, save steps and warm up steps are good for this demo. You'll have to change those for your own needs. These are all good so far. Let's go ahead and change the number of epics from 12 to just one. Let's go ahead and use brain float 16 as well instead of floating point 16. You're gonna to need to have Ampere or newer to do that, but brain float 16 is uh, superior to floating point 16. It's more stable and you can go ahead and look more to that if you like. And then um, we're also gonna to wanna to change the model name obviously. And so let me, let's go quickly to another screen where I show you where we're actually gonna get the model from. So as you might be aware, Meta released these weights to the public, but not as a general access. You had to apply to get them, so, but they like leaked as in anyone can access them now. Uh, so as of now, these weights are legit and they are on Hugging Face, uh, but that may change in the future where this is taken down, I don't know. But if it is taken down, you'll just have to convert the weights yourself after downloading the weights through a torrent or some other means, and then you'll give the path to the weights, where I'll show you here soon. But for now, since it's on Hugging Face, we can just go ahead and copy this, and then let's go back to the other screen. So we're back at the other screen, and here we are at the model name or path. So currently, we can just paste in the name that we copied from Hugging Face, and that will work, but let's say what I said that these are removed you can convert the weights with a script that is out there that you can find and then give the path of the weight so let's just say instead of having this so just put you know period slash llama weights and that will work um, so I'm not gonna change this but it's still worth talking about for lower end hardware which even RTX 3090s are lower end when it comes to these huge models, you're gonna to wanna to use stage three. If you are using something like an A100, which I actually recommend, you could rent those for relatively cheap, then you can use something like stage one. But you know we're using uh, 3090, so let's keep it at stage three. And then number of GPUs, how many do you have? I have two, so we'll change this to two. And at this point, we go ahead and run it, but as I said, I am already running it. And so I am not going to hit enter, but you would. So here we have the model that has been training on my 23090s. Uh, we can see that it's been training for about five and a half hours right here. 
and it's only gone 40 steps. Now, that is pretty slow. Um, and in fact, this is why I recommend that if you do want to fine tune, even though you can fine tune on 3090s, that you rent some cloud hardware and do it there. And here we have an RDP session of the 3090 server. The model is similar in size to GBTJ, so I, it is possible to run on this server, but it does take more since it is bigger. And we can see that the RAM is maxed out and we are actually using swap, which is probably why it's so slow. And if I did run this all the time, it would just be unnecessarily slow, but it also wear out the SSD over time. Uh, and so that is not good. And um, that's why it's possible, but I do not recommend running it on consumer hardware for many steps. In contrast, here I am fine tuning the Llama model on an A100 40 gigabyte with 200 gigabytes of regular RAM. We can see that we're getting a step about every five and a half seconds, which is much, much faster than fine tuning on my 3090 server. And therefore, this is the way that I would recommend doing it. And here we have the weights and biases for the fine tuning. This is for the 3090 server. Because we're testing at such smaller steps, we start with a much higher loss, but it rapidly decreases as one would expect. Uh, only 30 steps here. And then here we have the Llama with an A100 with weights and biases. And we can see that you know, the loss is also going down, which is what we'd expect with a successful fine tune. So the last thing I want to do for this video is actually inference from it. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this. And then we're going to see what the outputs from the model are. So let's go ahead and navigate to the inference folder. And now let's go ahead and run the vanilla query, which is just normal hugging face versus something like deep seed querying. And a flag is the model path. And let's go ahead and find our model. And it's called fine tune 700 because we did 700 steps. And let's go ahead and run it. And it's gonna be loading now and I'll come back when the result is done. So the input prompt is this and it wrote the rest. So it's pretty decent. It's, uh, you can read it yourself, pause and read it yourself. It's definitely a, you know, quote about love and this one is AI generated, so pretty cool. So at this point, I'm going to end today's video. If you liked it, please consider leaving a like. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing as this is typical of the kind of content I make. Consider joining the Discord for fun, interesting conversations as well as technical help. Thank you so much for watching and stay brilliant.